So the top five highlights of your career. I know that's going to be hard. Just five, five things highlights. that stand out. Um, well, I think, um, we had a, you know, we had a dream. When we were, when we were touring throughout Europe, you know, we, um, it was a struggle. I mean, it, it's, it's a struggle for all artists, you know, I mean, uh, there's a lot of luck that, luck played a role in, you know, in how far an artist goes as well as hard work, but I mean, we went to Portugal one time and we watched the Kelly family, which were a very popular band in Europe. Mm-hmm. And um, we watched them play in Portugal at the arena there. And uh, we just, you know, we'd known them and we saw them in their um, kind of the way that they work. And uh, we always dreamt about going back. If we ever came back to Portugal, we wanted to play at the same arena they played at, Saladon. And um, sure enough, the next time we went to Portugal, we sold it out. I just remember that being a really amazing accomplishment. Wow. And the fans, you know, just, you know, we told that story to the fans. And just, it almost seemed like they were connecting with us, like they wanted to see that happen. Uh, it, was, it was a really cool experience. And, um, you know, you, you have so many experiences, you know. It's... it's um, Everywhere you go, you know, you have you have experiences with a fan, you know, that they tell you a story, you know, that, you know, when we were kids, you know, when we were three and four years old, that wasn't three and four, I think we were maybe five and six, and we used to sing at the hospitals uh, in Canada. Yeah. And uh, um, we had a young girl that was in there that was dying of cancer, and her, you know, she knew about us, you know, we were, you know, we were a young little group in Victoria versus Columbia. She knew about us, and she wanted us to come in the hospital and sing for her. And we came in there, we sang for her, and we told her, you know, we prayed for her, and uh, we, we prayed for her while we were in the room. And, like, a month or two later, the mom called and said, you know, that was a huge experience for her, you know, and she felt like the prayer went a long way, but she completely recovered from her cancer. So that was, wow. that was something where it was an awesome experience, and, uh, and it was one that, you know, made us realize that that was something that we wanted to be a part of, you know, and, and we continue to be a part of, you know. We we always um, try to make time to go sing for the children's hospital and stuff like that. So, you know, you know that, um, those kind of experiences, you know, make you realize that what you're doing has an impact on people. Oh, yeah. Um, well, not to interrupt, no, I but... I'm sorry? I said not to interrupt, but I'm actually putting together a, a benefit for uh, Shriners Children's Hospital here, getting a bunch of acts together to sing. So. That's great. Trying yeah, to give back. The hospital, yeah, and the Children's Hospital actually the one the one artist that I'm trying to get involved from uh, Radio Disney, they want him to come in and meet with some of the kids, and I just think that'd be awesome. That's great. That's very cool you're doing that. Yeah, but I'm finding where, like, a lot of the bands are asking for money, and it's like, I don't, you know, I don't want to dig into my pockets and pay you money to play for charity. Yeah, I mean, yes, travel expenses, that I perfectly understand, but asking for, like, money, that just seems, you right. know, not cool. It kind of defeats the purpose of charity. Yeah, and I, it's not really the artists. I think it's more their managers and, like, their bands that want it. Yeah. But yeah, it's, exactly. just, that's, it's just, it's just... It just stinks, because it's like, I'm trying to give back and, like, find people that want to donate their time and, like, raise money, you know, and it's hard. It's a lot yeah. of work, but it's hard. we'll see how it works. I mean, if, we're, uh, if, if we've got this stuff going on and, and, uh, and we can manage to do that, we, we'd be interested to just keep me posted, you know. Okay, we will do. And then, final question. Uh, other experiences, you know. All right, yeah. Tough, you know. <laughs> You know, I think it's, we had a showcase, our first showcase of like strangers, and that was that was a, that was a great experience because it was like you know first real sort of in the United States, you know, and it was it was you know, a, a large crowd of industry people, and, and we felt like we put on a really good show. So that was that was a satisfying moment just to know that we that Clint and I can mm-hmm. you know we can do what we're doing um, at this level. So that was like. 
Okay, that was, I think that was what, three? <laughs> I'm sorry? I said I think that was what, three. Can you think of two other ones, or is there just way too many things? Yeah, I'm trying to think here. Uh, <laughs> um, what about when you hosted the Junos? That was pretty huge. The Junos, that was, that was true. You know, I, it was nerve-wracking, you know, and we're not, we never really been, I mean, that was kind of a first-time deal for us. I thought we did, you know, I thought we did well, considering that we've never done anything like that before. But, you know, it was fun. You know, it was really a fun experience. A lot of those experiences, you know, it's like, they're, they almost just, for me, it just seems like a life, life ago, you know. It's, yeah. It's such a crazy <laughs> experience, and I was really young. We were all really young, and um, we were so focused on what we were doing. And I, one of the reasons why I'd like to be able to travel and, and, and have our music across the border and into other countries is because, you know, as much as I did experience at that point in my life, it was such a blur, you know, it was so crazy and so fast. And we were everywhere, you know, we, we had, you know, interviews 12 hours a day and, you know, then we'd be going to another, we'd jump on a plane to another country and it was just, Oh, go, yeah. go, 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 and there's lots of stress, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, the, the most fun times were when we were on stage playing, you know, it was, that was our, you know, that was our time to have fun, you know, and so, but it was just a real sort of blur, you know, you know, it was a blur, you know, and, and so I think that happens when you're, when you're young like that, you know, so I definitely, if, if I get the opportunity to, to, um, to take our music around the world again. I'm definitely going to do it at a pace where I can appreciate, really appreciate um, the opportunity, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, um, and have it soak in, you know, every moment. Have that moment soak in and, or sink in and just um, and really appreciate those moments because um, it's not something you think about when you're young. You know, you don't no. think about those things when you're young. You just think about, you know, what's right in front of you. No, you gotta, you gotta take time to enjoy it all because it goes too fast. Exactly. Well, but, um, for I think you know, working with Paul Worley was the meeting we had with Paul Worley. Um, it was it was just a really cool thing because we told our manager and we said, you know, we'd really love to work with Paul Worley. You know, how can we? How can we make that happen? And, um, you know, he's the hottest producer in Nashville right now. He's winning Grammys, and, you know, his, his artists are just doing awesome. And, um, you know, we got a phone call, and we sent him we sent him one song, and he came back and said, wow, I love their song. You know, they remind me of my favorite act, the Everly Brothers. <laughs> and so we went and had a meeting with him, and, and it's just, we just one of those kind of meetings where you have a connection with somebody who's out outside the band that's never, that doesn't know you, that doesn't know your past, doesn't know your background, just knows what you're doing right now. And it was a pretty satisfying moment because, you know, I don't have anything that you're going to say about the past, our, our, our past the Moffat I, I love it, but when you're, when you're working on something new, it's really nice to have a perspective of what you're doing right now in this moment and it be recognized and, and somebody willing to invest their time and energy into something they think is um, is really good. So that was that was something that uh, was was really uh, a great experience for Claire and I. That's awesome. So as a final question, where can people go to hear your music? Where should they go to for updates? On the band. Well, right, you know, right now we're we've, we're doing a lot of demos, and so Claire and I are doing a lot of our own demos at our house, and so they're demo quality. And um, I was actually going to talk to our manager to find out, you know, if, if it if it'd be a good thing to actually post some of those grassroots demos on our page. <laughs> and um, I think Claire started doing that. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, you like to have finished product. Um, stuff up, but, you know, I think that it's becoming a different, I think, you know, if you can have your hand to grow with you and they understand that, you know, you're you're in a growth phase where you're you're experimenting and you're 
putting stuff out there and you're not, nothing's final and, you know, it's the quality of sound and isn't where it's going to be. I think that's, that's kind of the fear of, of putting stuff out there. Yep. Just, you know, you, you, hear, you hear artists, you know, they want to make sure they put a finished product out there because you never know what, what could take off and what could get in the hands of other people or if, well, who's going to hear it, you know? So I think, but I think, you know, it, it's, you're, you're coming at a point in time right now where music is just music, you know? It's, you, can't, you can't be too serious about it, you know? I mean, if, if, if you've got stuff that you like that you think you want people to hear, you know, you should put it out there. So I'm going to talk, we're going to, we probably have to talk to your management and finding out what the copyright and stuff like that, putting up stuff and, and demos on our pages and seeing, you know, the reaction. So do you ha- guys have a YouTube a YouTube channel, a website, a Twitter, any links that you can give out for people to go to? Um, or is that still yeah, on the works? We have a Facebook page. It's called, um, I'm pretty sure it's called Next Strangers HQ. Okay. And um, we have a street team on, on Facebook now as well. And I believe we have a Twitter page called Next Strangers HQ. Or I like Strangers I like Strangers in HQ. The, the Twitter one I'm active on at this point. Um, we're way more active on a, on a Facebook. Um, and a YouTube channel, we just haven't been doing. Um, the other big thing that we're doing right now is we're doing a lot of writing for other people. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been a focus. Um, we're starting to a publishing company here, so a lot of our energy at this point, um, while we're waiting for... Um, our la- our, the labels to, uh, to make decisions on what, what the next step is with us. We're focusing on getting our songs up for the other artists. There's a lot of material we've written in the last four or five years that uh, we feel, you know, other artists can, um, can record. So that's been a big priority for us uh, in the last few months is just writing on a continuous basis for other people. Awesome. Well, do you have any final final comments you want to say to those listening right now? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is, is, you know, as human beings, you know, you never really think that people um, continue to care about, you know, artists after they've, you know, um, finished, you know, their their chapter, which is what they're doing in our case, the Moffat. But it's just, you know, it's, it's always humbling and it's been been crazy, you know, even coming back to, you know, the United States is one of our smallest markets we had in terms of popularity, um, even at that, you know, we've had people come all the way to Nashville to see us play, um, on, I think we played three shows in Nashville, one at the Bluebird, one at, um, one at the, um, the Rutledge, and the other one right downtown at the, at the, at the music venue there, the small music venue. And we've had fans come out on every occasion and drive from different parts of the United States to come and see us play. Wow. So, you know, just to see that and to see the dedication that they still have, even when there's limited music out there, and um, and they really have to do the research to find music on us at this point because we're not not finding out anything on the radio. It's just amazing to see the support that our fans continue to have to have for us. So... Um, we want to make sure, and that, that keeps the field going for us. That's, that's why we keep doing what we're doing, you know, is, is to see that. And, uh, and we just, you know, we really we really hope that our music strikes forward here in Nashville and um, that we can get some some, some com- company with some muscle to be able to, uh, to move our music here. So and I think we're really, really close to finding that. Um, so I think, you know, we're looking at it. You know, hopefully our, our, our goal is, you know, by the end of next year to have a full record and videos and, um, and music um, submitted to radio and, and hopefully getting some airplay at that point. That's our goal right now. 